Good morning. My name is Elise Marshall, and I'm the Business Development Manager for APMG US. I'd like to welcome you to Implementing Technology Business Management in the Federal Government. This live stream event is being hosted by Learning Tree International and APMG. I'll be moderating the event today along with my colleague, Nigel Mercer. Nigel is the Regional Manager for APMG North America. Good morning, Nigel. Hi, everybody. So welcome to our live stream and I uh, hope you enjoy today's discussion. We've got a lot to talk about. There are a number of questions that have been posed to us already about TBM in the federal space. So look forward to getting started. But before we do that, just want to remind everybody who's watching the show today, you can ask your questions using slido.com. So on the screen at the moment, you'll see there's a link to Slido with a QR code. You can scan that QR code and it'll take you straight to Slido. You can enter any questions you might have for any of our panelists on today's show. So please feel free to go ahead and do that. Thanks, Elise. Thanks, Nigel. So technology business management is a value management framework that identifies the impact that IT has on successful mission outcomes. This initiative requires the involvement of the entire organization and is an opportunity for CIOs and leaders to get more value from their IT. Today, we'd like you to learn how a TBM certification accredited by APMG can help you accelerate your implementation and prepare your people, your process, and your organization for success. Now I'd like to introduce our panelists. Our first panelist is Antonio Mitchell. Tony is a director of the Business Management Office for the U.S. Small Business Administration. Tony has nearly 20 years of experience in IT governance and capital planning and investment control. Welcome, Tony. Good morning, and it's a pleasure to be here this morning. CEO of Mason Harriman Group. Mason Harriman Group is a management and IT consulting firm with decades of experience delivering innovative solutions, aligning business objectives with IT strategy. Mason Harriman specifically recruits and hires former CIOs and CFOs as management consultants to take advantage of this experience. As an early adopter of the TBM framework and taxonomy, Mason Harriman Group has demonstrated leadership in the industry, unlocking benefits across multiple agencies with cost modeling, implementation, and support for TBM solutions. Welcome, Teddy. Good morning, thank you for having me. I look forward to the discussion today. And our third panelist is Tom Boyce. Tom is with Learning Tree International and is a course author and instructor for implementing TBM in the federal government. Tom also has extensive government experience as the former CIO for the Department of Health and Human Services and the deputy CIO for the Nuclear Regulatory Commission. So welcome everyone and look forward to the conversation. That's right. Thanks, Elise. I appreciate the introduction. Uh, thank you to everyone who has joined us this morning. And I'm really uh, looking forward to this discussion and uh, addressing some of your questions. Thank you. Let's uh, get right into the questions, if we can. And our first one here is why technology business management model and who owns the TBM taxonomy? So, Ted, how about we have, toss this one to you to start out? Thank you. Um, well, why TBM? TBM is a lexicon or a language used by the CIO and the organization to really define the products and services that are delivered to their customers. I mean, this is in essence a Rosetta Stone or the language that they use to define all of these uh, tools and processes and the people that deliver the goods and services that help the customer. It's been used in the private sector for the last 15 years and has really helped that CIO run IT like a business. And, and by running it like a business, that CIO has a seat at the table when it's delivering a good service to the ultimate customer. Um, so it's critical that it could be used in the federal sector and it's at the right time to be used in the federal sector. Uh, who owns the TBM taxonomy? It's a wonderful organization called the TBM Council. Uh, they're all, they're, it's a nonprofit, and it's made up by the same folks 
that utilize the TBM taxonomy. They're all former or current CIOs throughout major organizations in the public sector, in the private sector, and in the nonprofit sector. So the, it's almost like eating your own dog food. They use it and they, uh, and they uh, supply it to their own customers. It's, it's, it's a great group of folks. Thank you. Tony, did you have something to add there? Yes, I just want to say uh, with the federal government embracing the TBM framework and the TBM taxonomy in general, uh, we have been able, as Teddy said, to use that as that common language uh, foundation when it comes to aligning the business and aligning it to the technology that we use on an enterprise level mm -hmm. to serve the uh, our key stakeholders and also our constituents, which are our small business owners. So uh, it has definitely helped us to clearly articulate exactly what we're saying and how we're able to align everything that we're doing to that taxonomy. So it has been definitely beneficial for us. That's great, that's great. I think this next question could be directed to you as well, Tony. So who within my organization do I need to engage with in order to implement TBM? Well, speaking from our experience, the the most mission critical partnership that we have right now is with the chief financial officer. And they pretty much hold the data that we use on a consistent basis because it's one thing to actually have IT services, but you gotta have the actual funding to support those IT services. So in working in partnership with the chief financial officer and also working in close collaboration with the chief acquisition officer, we're able to build uh, a strong foundation, a strong partnership as far as embracing TBM and embedding TBM into our daily business processes, uh, which has been really helpful. And one key partnership that we're establishing right now that's growing uh, by the day is with our chief uh, human resource uh, officer. So that is helping us to clearly articulate our IT resources from a workforce uh, manpower standpoint and to also identify any training areas that we need to focus on to help that clearly align to the TBM taxonomy. So we've been able to identify some shortfalls. We've been able to identify some gaps within our IT workforce that we wouldn't have identified before if we didn't embrace TBM. Um, and then lastly, one of the really, really key stakeholders or, that you need to engage with are the subject matter experts. And that could trickle down from uh, the finance side, it could trickle from the HR side, it could trickle down from the acquisitions, or it could even come from the program office uh, level who have uh, specific missions. Uh, for instance, SBA, we're more, we process loans for small businesses. Also, we provide disaster assistance uh, to all small businesses. Those are very specific mission areas that we have within SBA, yet we bring them to the table because with their unique set, we have to be able to talk TBM because at any given moment, and we've seen this with the COVID pandemic, we have to ramp up our services and scale it to the level of the need uh, that comes from Congress or comes from the White House. So TBM has helped us in that regard. That's great. And it sounds like you guys have been busy over the past year and a half. So uh, thank you for that. <laughs> Extremely busy. So Tom, I think here's a question for you. Why is technology business management education so essential? Yeah, thanks Elise. Well, with any new initiative such as TBM, there's a lot of moving parts. I mean, you've got to learn the lexicon, the terms, the technology, the definitions. I mean, that's just the beginning. You have to learn all the touch points that Tony just described, all the parts of the organization that are going to potentially be involved. Uh, you have to wor worry about how am I going to integrate this new initiative with my existing processes, my IT management, my daily operations, uh, this, Tony mentioned the CFO, so there's the finance aspect to it. Um, in short, education allows you to avoid those uh, startup issues and challenges you might not anticipate otherwise. It allows you to practice some hands-on uh, exercises, 
So you know where to start and you can get the most out of your TBM journey in the shortest amount of time. It's great. And it's not just about gaining the education, but it's about actually implementing it and putting it to practice. Yeah, well said. So who would benefit from attending a TBM Fundamentals for the federal government certification course and becoming certified? Teddy, maybe you could take this one, please. Well, okay, thank you. Um, well, this gets back to what Tony was saying about the entire organization. You know, any IT project isn't a project that you just shove down the throat of an organization. It's an ecosystem. A number of people are involved, just in the private sector and in the public sector. And who benefits when you're talking about the delivery of these goods and services in IT when you're doing training is not just the CIO's team, but the CFO and their team. Training in the fundamentals of this lexicon are important because it's the money and it's the uh, delivery of these goods and services. The third person that benefits is the HR team because the HR team is helping uh, the organization grow with training. And training is so important to a person's, uh, you know, future delivery of any product or service or their job. The fourth person that's important is procurement. So procurement in an organization is buying product from a corporate. I think Tom, we should. Obviously we teach the basic TBM terms and concepts. We look at the taxonomy and stuff, but you're probably already sensing a theme about the cross organizational boundaries. So we talk about all the touch points, uh, that are you know potentially going to be needed to make a TBM uh, implementation successful. Uh, we you know obviously Ted just mentioned the procurement uh, aspects, but we also talk about how to integrate it uh, with your day to day activities and your yearly budget planning. Uh, the federal budget has like a three years ongoing budget cycle. There's like three budgets being touched at once: what we're executing, what we're planning, what we're forecasting, and Tied in with that is capital planning and investment control, which TBM uh, obviously su supports and is actually one of the tenets of TBM, which is getting better at planning and governing your mission IT. Uh, and lastly, one of the big aspects of this is how to address TBM implementation as a change management initiative and what that means for the organization, the stakeholders, and what needs to change in order to be successful. To me, that's one of the big takeaways. TBM in the context of how does the agency need to change to make this successful? Thank you. So how can this technology business management certification help accelerate implementation? Teddy, I'm gonna to toss this one to you, please. Okay, thank you. Um, so I, I kind of align this to the athlete. An athlete, trains and trains and trains and practices to get it right. And then they train and train so they can't get it wrong. At the core, training helps you not be able to wing it, right? And so if I'm in the CIO, put my, you have to put yourself in the position of where, what's in it for me. If I'm in the CIO organization and I'm gonna deliver goods and services to my customer, I wanna get trained and understand how to do that the best way possible. And I also want to gain certifications so that it helps me both with my job today and my job in the future. On the flip side, the vendors who provide services to a, that business of IT, they want to get trained in the delivery of those services. So just like you get trained for Java, just like to deliver a, a software or you're getting trained in networking or in infrastructure, you wanna get trained in the business of IT, the lexicon and the language of how cost transparency of a good and service is delivered to that customer. So the, the vendor community wants to get trained in TBM. So it's a life cycle. It's an entire ecosystem of folks involved in this factory delivering goods and services to a customer. And at that core is training. And at the core of TBM is TBM training. Thanks, Teddy. So what makes public sector implementation different from private sector TBM implementation? 
I think, Tony, we can toss this over to you. Absolutely. So with the federal government, uh, we have different mandates that we have to adhere to. Uh, we have FATARA, uh, which is uh, definitely one of the congressional mandates that we uh, adhere to. We also get our direction from OMB and also from the White House. So we have, and that's on top of our own mission that we have to achieve at the federal agency level. So we have a lot uh, that we have to adhere to from a federal government standpoint. In regards to TBM, this was directed uh, as a result of Fatara passing and then OMB actually uh, instituted uh, using for, uh, TBM to communicate how we're spending uh, close to $90 billion in IT every fiscal year. And uh, this is, uh, Teddy always says this, this is not including all the shadow IT <laughs> that's not being accounted for in the federal government. So what TBM has helped us to do at the, at the Small Business Administration is provided more transparency into where our money is being spent. And it has uh, shed light on some of those shadow IT projects and some of those other systems that are not being accounted for, but we're including it into our IT portfolio now. So, but the biggest thing that makes us different from the private sector is we're not in the business of profit uh, gains or losses. Our main objective is to make sure that the public, which is small business owners, are really getting the resources that they need to be successful and to sustain that success. So for us, using TPM helps us to be better stewards of the taxpayer dollars that uh, we're utilizing every single day. And we're turning those into viable and valuable uh, services that they could utilize that make their lives better. Thank you. And as a taxpayer? Yeah. I really appreciate the accountability here. <laughs> <laughs> may, may I add to that? Because that's a really important po point Tony just hit on. I mean, these are two different worlds. No matter how much we say they're the same, they're very different. The private sector is delivering a good and service to their customer. And it's, yeah, it's to improve the customer's uh, behalf. But the private sector firm is also... Uh, one of their metrics is profit and loss. That's different in the federal sector. It's all about that mission, delivering that good or service to that customer. And policy drives that, policy. And it's important, you know, our, our audience may not, that's in the private, private sector might not always understand that, but our public sector folks that understand that policy, policy, policy drives that budget that then ties to that mission goal and objective. And that's critical to delivering that good and service uh, to the American people. Two different types of banks. You got the SBA that had to surge up during this whole PPP timeframe and deliver goods and services that kept the American people and their businesses running. Uh, I, I can't, I can't uh, tell you how impressed I am when I see the great work that our federal government does in providing goods and services to us, the Americans. Yeah, that's very true. Very true. Thanks, Teddy. All right. So on to Tom for this next question, I believe. What are the main topics covered in the TBM certification course? So thanks. Yeah. So Tony did a great job setting this up for me, talking about Fratara and OMB and Ted mentioned policy and stuff. So nothing happens in a vacuum, right? You can't take on a new initiative like TBM and just treat it as a separate project or program. It's not gonna work. You have to integrate it. So uh, the course starts with um, the legislative background. Clear and Cohen, which was passed in 1996, was an act to uh, potentially address how well uh, IT is managed in the federal government. It was one of the first legislations to attempt to do that. So the course lays the background. What's the legislative history? How did we get here? What does it mean that OMB is requiring this? Uh, you know, what are the actual requirements and reporting? So we go over all that background before we get into the nuts and bolts of what is TBM. So it covers, you know, the TBM taxonomy, how it has a flavor of activity-based costing within it, and it goes beyond that. Um, 
we do some hands-on training, which I think is essential so you can make some of the mistakes in the course rather than get back to your agency and, and fumble around of how do we start this? You know, what does it look like? Do we start with the general ledger? Do we start with invoicing? Um, we talk about roles and responsibilities and one of the main benefits to each of those roles and responsibilities of actually doing a TBM implementation. Uh, we talk about where it touches program and project management because so, I'm a firm believer uh, and I leveraged my 26 years in the federal government of how are we going to make this real for the program managers and the project managers that are running IT today but are going to need to implement TBM to make this successful. And then we end the course with an exercise where you can actually begin to build a roadmap for your agency and take back those practical skills. So I, I think it's fairly comprehensive and it's a great foundational introduction to what do I need to get started? Great. And I think this is a follow on to that is, will I leave the, course, the TBM course with any useful tools that I can immediately use in my implementation? Yeah, great, great follow-on question. So uh, we've built the course around a scenario-based uh, concept where you are going to be the TBM lead to implement TBM for a fictional organization, which is based on uh, basically a glom together two federal agencies as a, a background scenario. And all the exercises build on the fact that this agency is, you know, okay, we're tackling TBM, uh, how do I do it? And all the exercises are centered around that agency's budget. How am I gonna take that data and make it work? What are the stakeholders within that organization I need to get involved? What are their concerns? So we weave into an actual scenario that people should be able to see themselves in. How am I gonna do this? What data am I gonna need? What are the, you know, what, what does it actually look like when I try, start taking that very high level budget and try to map it to the very descriptive and distinct TBM taxonomy. We let them make mistakes in the course. So when they get back to the agency, they know what's not going to work because they've already seen what that looks like. And now they've got the real world uh, hands-on experience to start building and executing that roadmap that they've already thought through. So it does give them concrete skills to take away and begin immediately when they get back to their agency. That's great. Uh, Thank you. Tom. Elise, I want to add okay, something real quick. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, to Tom's point, uh, SBA, we were one of the first to take the Learning Tree TBM uh, uh, foundation course. And this is a real case scenario. After we took the course, uh, several of the people that participated were now able to see how TBM fit within the context of how we do it within uh, SBA. And we were able to take the OCIO spin plan, which we were still uh, crafting for FY 22 and 23. And we were able to align all of our business requirements to the TBM taxonomy so that we could communicate exactly what our needs were and to also justify the increase in spend because due to COVID, and supporting PPP and supporting all of the other initiatives that came from the White House and Congress, our IT staff and our work ramped up. And we had to justify with the new capabilities that we're supporting, we need to sustain that at a higher level instead of de-scoping that. And we were able to talk that language and justify our requirements based on TBM. So now the CFO is working with us and we're now also working with the administrator to increase our spin, spin plan in order so that we can continue the level of service that we're providing, not only internally within the enterprise, but also uh, to small businesses. So if we didn't utilize TBM and really embed it into and really embrace it, uh, quite honestly, we would not be in the position that we're in right now to clearly negotiate. Um, those trends and analysis. That's fantastic. And we got Real that, and we got that from just attending the course. That's great. Well, I'm going to continue over with you, Tony, too. Um, does the class consider um, other federal requirements, such as FITARA and OMB reporting, that are 
related to TBM. And I, I know you talked on this a little bit, so can you expand on that a little bit? Yes, absolutely. So within the FATAR, we have the FATAR scorecard. And one of the things that we're doing uh, in regards to this is uh, utilizing TBM to account for all of our IT acquisition spend. Uh, we have been able to use TBM to align our IT contracts to pertinent IT services that are within the TBM taxonomy. So we know exactly what service has what kind of acquisition vehicle is associated with that, which falls in alignment with on uh, Fatara uh, reporting, which helps in our scorecard overall. In regards to OMB reporting, uh, as you know, we have the IT capital planning process that we follow. Uh, Tom brought that aspect up with Cling of Coin. Uh, we do our OMB annual submissions every September and the President's budget submission that is done every January. So with that, we have to break out our IT costs based on the TBM uh, taxonomy, which means the cost pools in the IT towers. So we're, we were able to utilize that in this training uh, that was provided by Learning Tree uh, to actually clearly articulate why exactly we're doing this. Uh, it's not a pencil whip exercise. It's something that we're fully embracing and this class helped to reiterate the benefits and the value of uh, utilizing TBM. That's great. And Tom, over to you. Yeah, I, thanks, Tony. I wanted to follow up. Uh, I, I taught the class last week uh, to you know, obviously a different audience on SBA people. And uh, one of the deputy CIOs in the class mentioned that Congress is uh, certainly discussing adding TBM compliance to the FATARA scorecard. Now, you never know what Congress is actually going to do, but it's at least under discussion. So it just emphasizes the point that uh, agencies really are going to need to pay attention to this because if there's, you know, another reporting requirement that's part of FATARA, they're going to need to get on the back bandwagon quickly. Great. Thanks, Tom. So, Tony, I'm going to continue with you, um, seeing as how you are doing this in, in real time. <laughs> um, will I need anything else to implement, to fully implement TBN? Yes, you need a very planned out detailed change management strategy. And why do I say a change management strategy? Uh, TBM is more than just a framework. It is a change in culture. It is a change in the way you do business. It's a change in the way you have conversations with other senior leaders and other subject matter experts. So with any organizational change initiative, you have to have a change management strategy in place to fully, one, get people trained on TBO, two, to continue the internal um, uh, opportunities that you have to further expand the brand of TBM, and three, you got to show the value in it. So what we're doing uh, within SBA is not only are we working with partnership with our acquisition, financial management, and human resource stakeholders, we're also working with our subject matter experts and we're getting the data. And instead of us just getting the data and just using it for our own purposes, we're refurbishing that and creating visible deliverables, which they can see that their data is being valuable and is being added. So we're actually getting more data now that we have in the past and it's being more willingly shared with us. So that's all due to the change management strategy that we have. So you have to continuously talk TBM and you have to essentially set up a center of excellence uh, in regards to TBM and invite everyone to it because everyone is a part of this. Because when you look at the acronym, technology, business, management, not only do you have to have the technical people involved, but you also got to have the business people involved. And that way, when you bring those two groups together, you're able to manage everything under your purview. Yeah, thanks, Tony. So we're into another question. And here it says, isn't this just a flavor of the month management initiative? Teddy, how about over to you on this one? Okay, um, I'm going to step back and go into those two different worlds, the private sector world and the federal sector, right? Private sector, public sector. 
although you have the same problems, you're delivering a good and service to both your customer, the way they go about it and the way the organizations are run is a little different. On the private sector side, you know, that CEO may say, hey, flavor for the month or for the next three quarters is this because I have to hit some certain numbers. And it's a quick revolution. But again, the problem is the same, delivering a good and service to that customer. On the federal sector or the public sector, it's different. It's about policy. I mean, Washington doesn't make stuff. It makes policies. Policies support the goods and services that are delivered to us, the American public. And that's at the core. So as you go through this problem, now you see that a policy is being delivered to give the CIO more and more authorities. Those more and more authorities enable that CIO to run IT like a business. Again, not a revolution, an evolution. Constantly giving that CIO more authority and a seat at the table to deliver the goods and services to the American people. We've seen over the last 20 years how big IT has become in, in the private sector to help organizations. Can you imagine $90 billion in IT being spent every year in the federal sector and another probably double that in shadow IT? Using those dollars to be more efficient and more effective and delivering the goods and services to us, the American people, isn't just a flavor of the month. It's an imperative. And um, I see this TBM as it's here to stay. And now let's get ready to use it, embrace it, and ensure that the dollars that are, that are in the stewards' hands of our federal executives are best used for those American people. Yeah, thank you, Teddy. So how strictly do I need to adhere to the TBM taxonomy? Tom, how about for you on this one? Thanks, Alicia. Yeah, great question, especially given the differing missions in the federal government, right? You know, uh, I work well, a large part of my career uh, within uh, Health and Human Services. How different that mission is than, say, mm -hmm. SBA, where Tony works, or NASA, who puts, you know, vehicles on Mars. So how can you have a one-size-fits-all? Uh, that being said, there are some rules within the TBM taxonomy. You can't redefine hardware and software, they've got a taxonomy with strict definitions. You can't split up a category like hardware on your own because that would change the definition, but it is flexible. Uh, you could add new categories or subcategories, given the different missions, I think that's almost gonna be a given within the federal government. There's not gonna be a one size fits all. Um, so it's not a rigid framework with a, you must do th things this way. You can use what works for your agency and in particular your mission, because that's what it's all about, is delivering mission value. So you can use what works for you. And then I hesitate to say ignore, but not necessarily have to engage every last aspect of that TBM taxonomy, which is fairly comprehensive, but it may not apply in your case when you're doing small business loans and reaching out to that segment of your, you know, uh, of the citizens and the businesses of the U.S. from a government mission perspective. Thanks, Tony. Did you want to add something for that in the real, on real world? Yes, absolutely. Okay. Uh, I was definitely going to add in uh, within the SBA, we don't use the full TBM framework, uh, the taxonomy. Um, and that's only because some areas really do not pertain to us. Yeah. Uh, and that's okay. Uh, you don't, the one thing about TBM, and I love the word that Tom used, flexibility. It gives you the flexibility to look at what really pertains to us. Okay, and let's knock that out. We already know hardware, that's clear definition. Software, that's a clear definition. Internal, external labor, we, we know that's a, a clear definition. Some of the, when you move up to the IT tower le level, that's when you start getting in the, in the weeds. That's when you really start to see what services do we actually provide that fit within this tower section. So 
a lot of things that we identified were not exactly in the TBM framework or the taxonomy. However, uh, to Tom's point, we kind of created these separate categories that kind of say, hey, for us, we have this specific bucket and we've come up with some subcategories that support that. So I would say to fully embrace it is not to be so rigid that you just have to follow the, the framework. Uh, follow the, frame, uh, the framework because it's a good foundation. It'll help you to communicate across the board exactly what you're talking about. Uh, but also had that flexibility to say, because of our unique mission and because of the services we provide from an agency standpoint, we're going to have some categories that's going to be outside of the scope of the uh, TBM taxonomy. That's great. That's great. So that's flexibility is all about, right? So, um, Teddy, over to you on this one. What are the long term benefits of a successful TBM implementation? Well, that's a great question. Um, I'm going to kind of revert back to what I was mentioning between the private sector and the public sector to help uh, answer that. There's the short term benefits, which is now I've got my IT and my catalog of services and I've defined something important called transparency. What's the total cost of each of these products and services that I'm delivering to that really important mission or that customer? That short-term benefit is huge. The next uh, benefit is understanding the cost across an entire organization. And it, it might sound a little uh, hard to believe, but you know, in any IT organization, I'm sorry, in any federal organization, there's a lot of IT. Some of it is under the CIO, and some, some of it is scattered throughout the entire organization in programs uh, and all doing good stuff delivering goods and services to the customer, but it's everywhere. And so that shadow in essence, or citizen driven IT that's in the um, different parts of the organization, in that next short term benefit, you get visibility of all that stuff. And that visibility then helps the long term benefits of saying, okay, now we've got 14 data centers. You think maybe we should have three, we've got five versions of this software that we're consuming from the same vendor. You think as good stewards of this, maybe we should have two or one. The long-term benefits of transparency of cost and the delivery of these goods and services is huge because the CIO and his team starts to run IT like a business, like it's their own money. It's a great feeling because then you're making decisions on these dollars being spent uh, for your customer. And it, it, when you run IT like it's a business and when you think about the dollars as your own dollars and it's yours, you start to see an enormous glide path of a CIO organization. Take for instance, the SBA. They did more loans in 14 days than they had done in 14 years. That organization was able to surge and provide yeah. loans to the American people. This is awesome stuff. Behind that is a thread to understand these costs and these transparency of costs. Can you imagine in the future being able to then do what if analysis? You say, hey, what if we were to surge? How much IT would I need? What if I was to downsize something? How much less do I need? Imagine that being available throughout all the federal government to the Department of Transportation, the Department of the DOD, to our, educate, DO, our Department of Education, uh, HUD, Department of Homeland Security, Justice. This ability to run IT like a business enables that CIO to deliver goods and services to the mission. And that's most important. Thank you. So, uh, Tony, over to you. Um, what are some lessons learned from the TBM implementation? I think, you know, you've been through this in the real world scenario. So what are some lessons learned? Lessons learned is to how do you eat an elephant one piece at a time? <laughs> <laughs> so you have to be incremental and you have to be very strategic in regards to TBM implementation. And uh, 
it, at some point you move away from the implementation aspect uh, to the sustainment of TBM. But to really truly implement and know that you've implemented TBM across the board is when your senior leaders start utilizing the data that is aligned to TBM and they use it to make mission critical decisions. When your senior leaders are at that point, that's when you know that you have successfully implemented TBM. Um, some federal agencies are a lot further ahead than others. Uh, within SBA, we were able to move rather quickly in regards to our TBM implementation due to one, we have a very small IT portfolio, but at the same time, we had a CIO and the CFO that fully embraced TBM from the jump. So that really helped us in regards to our change management and in regards to really embracing TBM that trickled down to the, our program offices and all the way down to our divisions. And right now, uh, we have another great partnership between the CIO and the CFO that has really taken it to another level. So, and we, and our deputy CIO is working with us and we're working with other program offices to take TBM and automate it across the board. And we're changing our IT governance in regards to utilizing TBM more and more. So it's, it's a phased approach. You have to be patient. You have to uh, clearly articulate strategic goals and objectives that are really achievable. Um, if it takes a full fiscal year to get one goal achieved, hey, it takes a whole fiscal year. Uh, but continue to do the work. Otherwise, you're just going to just do what is the minimum, bare minimum, is just the OMB reporting. Great. Thank you. Thank you, Tony. So, Tom, I guess this question, and we flipped past this on the screen, but uh, how long will it take the average organization to implement TBM? I, I love the average organization part of this. There's no uh, such thing. Yeah, yeah, after nearly 40 years supporting federal government IT management, both within and without as a contractor, I don't think there is an average organization. We already used the example of SBA compared to Health and Human Services compared to NASA, right? So. Uh, Tony just made a great point. It takes what it takes, right? I, I would say, and it's going to depend on the size of the organization, the will of the of the organization, the resources, you know, six to 12 months to show some early wins and benefits. Um, OMB and GSA sponsor a federal technology investment management working group. And there was a major government agency who I won't mention, but, uh, they did a presentation a few meetings ago where they had a three-year roadmap and, and year one is just sort of getting all their ducks in a row. So they had a three-year roadmap from when they're kicking off to um, where they think they may be done, at least fully utilizing most of TBM. So, you know, your mileage may vary is the best I can say, right? Sounds good. Yeah. Makes perfect sense. <laughs> Makes perfect sense. All right. Um, I think we're going to go back over to Tony for this. Um, since some parts of the organization are not may not want to adopt the TBM, how do you overcome the institutional resistance? Mm, that is an excellent question. And I think it comes with education. Um, sometimes when you face resistance, uh, you, ha you have to, one, further explain with them what TBM is and the value that it brings. Uh, one of the things that I did when I first came to uh, SBA was work with the TBM council to set up a uh, TBM training for not only just the OCIO, but for other um, stakeholders within the enterprise. And that was greatly received. And that helped to break down some of the barriers in regards to TBM who thought this was just a Flavor of the Month, I, I saw that in one of the other questions, a Flavor of the Month initiative that's going to go away. No, TBM is not going away. Uh, it is here to stay, it is going to be the way that we really truly articulate our IT spend across the federal government moving forward. So with that, we have done several initiatives, internal training that we provide within my division 
and also working with Learning Tree and working with other private sector uh, uh, constituents that have really helped us to communicate how we could better uh, spread the wealth and spread the value of TBM. So you have to constantly communicate it, one. Two, you have to show TBM can help you to be better and efficient in these particular areas. So when you spin it in a way that benefits them, they're more able to embrace it than resist it. So you have to take it by a case by case basis. Why is this person really resisting? And then once you find that route, uh, you can identify the solution to get them on board. Great, thank you. May, may I add to that? Of course. Uh, I, and, and that was a great answer, Tony. Um, and what we also see is human nature. Uh, what's in it for me, right? Who's mm -hmm. gonna move my cheese? What's in it for me? I like this technology, I'm hugging this, I'm not giving it up. Oh my gosh, I gave it up, but it's made my job easier because now I'm doing the next great thing. What's in it for me? And, and the organization, once they feel like they're part of the bigger solution, which is that delivery of goods and services to that customer, TBM helps you get that seat at the table. Every CIO wants a seat at the table. Every CIO's community wants a seat at the table. They're given policies, procedures, and authorities to get that seat at the table. But understanding the cost and the, of the delivery of these goods and services get you to earn that seat at the table. So that resistance starts to go away because you're, you're on the same wavelength. You're using a technology business management lexicon to define the goods and services that you're 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 changing the customer's impression and delivering that good to them so it's a wonderful thing and we see resistance all the time resistance is just human nature i don't get it great thank you Tim. <laughs> All right, we've got one more on the screen here, and then I have one of my own. Um, isn't this just another CIO initiative that has no benefit to the rest of the organization? I think, Ted, we're going to give this one to you as well. Uh-oh. Uh, I'm going to need a little help from this for my uh, teammates, too. Okay. But, uh, I, I, I don't think it's, it's just another CIO initiative. Um, I think this is key to the way the federal government's IT organizations are going to look, act, and work in the future. They're going to understand the cost of these goods. They're, they're going to earn that seat at the table. When they're at that seat at the table, defining and delivering these goods and services is IT to the mission. They're going to be able to help that mission um, be effective. Look, the CIO is not, gonna, is not getting more money most of the time. So they're making good with what they've got. And if they can say, I'm providing you this good and service for this cost. If I was to switch it up, I could provide more value and more value to that customer with these dollars. That earns them that seat at the table. If they can move money around and ensure that they're delivering that good and service, that seat at the table never goes away. I don't see this as an initiative that's a fly by night. I see this as the arming that CIO community with an ability to really continue to provide the leading and bleeding edge uh, technologies that ensure um, each of these departments provide that good and service to us, the American people. Thanks. Help. Tony, you want to okay. add there? Yes. Uh... I definitely want to say this is most definitely not just a CIO initiative uh, because the one thing that has truly been, a, I want to say kind of a blessing, so to speak, uh, with embracing TBM is that it's helped us to identify a lot of key stakeholders that were not being invited to the table, as Ted said, that should be at the table. Um, and it's easily to overlook when you just think when you just think TBM is just a technology kind of thing. And no, it's a business uh, thing. 
And it helps to identify the value that we're trying to provide with not only within the organization, but for everyone that's external to the organization as well. So with utilizing TBM, we're able to have those value conversations with all of our key stakeholders and we're identifying, hey, we can help you in this regard. I think someone said, I think it was Teddy, uh, we have enterprise licenses all across the board. We have one program office that might have 10. We have another program office that might have 15. And we're utilizing within the OCIO, we have five. Hey, we're ident using TBM has helped us identify all those enterprise licenses. Let's combine the effort and let's actually come up with either one enterprise solution that benefits everyone. You can't do that if you're just saying this is a CIO initiative. And here's one key point. Within the federal government, the CIO is not really in charge of the whole entire IT spend. Yeah. Now, let's, let's really make that point clear. The CIO, based on FATARA, has oversight but it doesn't necessarily mean that the CIO is in control of every IT dollar that's being spent. Hopefully that would change over time, but within the federal government, you have different bureaus or you have different program offices that manage their own IT. And it's, TBM is helping us to gain one, more transparency into what they're actually doing with their IT spend. And two, it's helping us to collaborate and it provide advice and provide guidance on how they could better make their IT spend more efficient. So uh, TBM is really helping in that regard from a federal government standpoint. Uh, do I think we'll get to that level that Fatara says that the CIO is managing everything? That remains to be seen, but at the meantime, we're using TBM to kind of get as much transparency and establish more collaboration as possible. Thank you, Tony. All right, we are getting up to the top of the hour here, and I did just have one quick question uh, for Tom here, because I know that um, this is something that came into me actually, and somebody wants to know the difference between this TBM certification and the one from the TBM Council, and hopefully we can answer this succinctly. If not, um, if, if we have other questions coming in, just so you know, we will get a uh, learning tree to answer these questions uh, going forward, but this one was, uh, I thought was, was certainly relevant. Yeah, thanks, Elise. No, that's a great question. I, having taken, you know, the uh, TBM Council training and, you know, going through their tests and all, it's good training. It teaches you the nuts and bolts of the TBM taxonomy. But you know, we've already alluded to how the uh, private sector is profit-driven and how the public sector is mission-driven. But it's a lot, the training's a lot different than that. Uh, the learning tree training talks about the context of doing this within the federal government, how you make it work with FATARA, the OMB mandates, and how you integrate it. And the integration part to me seems to, uh, to not be touched in the depth that we go into, how to integrate this within a federal agency with all the considerations of budgeting and mission, IT program and project management, all the acquisition regulations that the government has to deal with, and you really need to understand how to integrate a new initiative like this, not just, oh, I've learned the taxonomy and, and I've seen what mapping a budget to the taxonomy looks like. It, the course goes well beyond uh, just the nuts and bolts. That's great. May, may yeah. I add to that? Of course, Teddy. Yeah, the TBM Council has done a, a phenomenal job with great training, um, but what would, what the training here is doing is really showing you how to implement TBM in this beast called the the public sector, right? Which is full of mountains of compliance and buzzwords like CPIC and FATARA or PPBE or a federal budgeting process with year-end money, no year-end money, color of money. Mm -hmm. Financial management, I mean, you go crazy with this mountain of, you know, FAR regulation and all that. And what they've, what the Learning Tree team has done is threaded together, implementing, running like IT, like a business, 
in the federal government. And that's the secret sauce because you got to understand this battlefield called the federal government and all of the compliance that's in there threaded together in this Gregorian knot. And they have masterfully taught you how to figure out how to use TBM and get all parties in line because it's it's not the private sector where the boss says, yeah, go do it or we're firing you. No, it doesn't work like that. In, in the federal government is you're going to work together. CIO working with the CFO, working with the CPO, working with the Chico, working with the mission to deliver what? Goods and services to the American people. So you got to get everybody involved. And that threading that needle is what the Learning Tree folks did. So, you know, kudos to them and kudos to the uh, TBM Council for really establishing this framework that's going to help organizations across the world run IT like a business. That's great. That's great. Well, I'd like to uh, like to thank you all for joining today and thank our panelists for, um, you know, your wonderful discussion. This has really been very enlightening for me as well. Um, and uh, thanks for putting all of this into practice. And uh, I think we're just going to be wrapping up the session now, unless anybody has any further comments. No, right. this was awesome. Really enjoyed this. Now, I want to thank APMG for the opportunity and the hosting of this. Much appreciated. Yeah. And and I, I would love to thank you guys for, you know, making this a certificate, a certification, uh, because training is so important to the, the men and women in, in the federal uh, government with their performance evaluations and their jobs and doing their job today and doing their job in the future. But also a big shout out to the Learning Tree folks for really, you know, taking the foot forward to develop this um, training for the federal sector. But most importantly, I got to thank the SBA because what they did over the last year and a half for our country is phenomenal. Uh, they kept us going. I, I'm a small business and I, I'm a proud uh, um, user of the SBA's capabilities and services. So I can't thank you enough for what you did for my small business and for the small business community right. in, in our great nation. Right. Thank you. Right. All right. And with that, I think we are going to wrap up the session. Thank you again, everyone, for